But while you will see and hear from me throughout the week, I know right now you are interested in hearing the latest of what's happening in Jamaica and how we're performing. My dear friends, I'm very pleased to tell you that the state of the tourism industry in Jamaica is strong and flourishing. Our history has embraced the ethos, and indeed our industry has embraced that ethos too, that we will have even more. 24. And, and that's been recognizing, of course, the transformative power of tourism um, and how, indeed, it is a huge driver of our economy and, indeed, the backbone of the well-being of the entire region of the Caribbean. You remember yesterday I said that tourism uh, the Caribbean is the most tourism dependent region on planet Earth. <coughs> and I gave some stats on that, which I hope you recall. But I believe in my heart that Jamaica is the crown jewel of the Caribbean. And we work very hard to cultivate a world class destination that continues to yield record breaking achievement. And this year is no exception. The United States, our number one source market, has continued to experience steady economic growth, supported by a consumer spending, a resilient labor market, and ongoing investment in technology and infrastructure. However, many Americans are still inflationary, con uh, are still concerned about the inflationary impact, and indeed, the uncertainties that have emerged since COVID-19 recovery. I, at an earlier time, I indicated that, in fact, the recovery might itself be more disruptive than COVID itself. Um, the supply chain disruptions in the global space has had an impact, as is well known. And nowhere is it more evident than in the tourism sector, especially as it relates to human capital disruptions and now aviation issues. We're finding that the ability to deliver on orders to some of our major airline partners by airline manufacturers are significantly affected. And this could influence the broader picture in terms of tourism growth for the next year, and in fact, a few years down the road. But having said all of that, it recognizes that there are headwinds that are ahead. But while there are headwinds, there are great opportunities. Great opportunities that are bounding, as, as I indicated yesterday, some 1.5 billion more tourists are going to be coming into the tourism space in the next 25 to 50 years. And they are coming from all over. And our job is going to be to create the products to enable them to have the experiences that they seek. <coughs> Recognizing the uh, psychographic profiles of the varied uh, demographics that are emerging from the different parts of the world. And to be able to build products to respond to these demands. So I'm happy to say that the tourism industry in Jamaica has maintained a remarkable post-COVID-19 pandemic rebound, solidifying Jamaica's position as one of the world's fastest growing recovering countries and the Caribbean's fastest recovered tourism destination. Jamaica's pioneering role in various aspects of the tourism industry has significantly influenced the global perception of our destination, establishing it as a top choice for visitors worldwide. I'm thrilled to announce that the tourism is experiencing an unprecedented surge. Our key market shows strong performance. The U.S. maintained a majority stake in the overall market, with a 74% share of total arrivals, outperforming now 2022 by 16 percentage points. 
And our second largest market, Canada, experienced a remarkable growth of 38.6%, accounting now for 12.9% of the market. In fact, for the just concluded fiscal year 23-24, that is fiscal year for us, you know, meaning to say our year starts April 1, the fiscal year, and ends uh, March 31st. So the fiscal year ending 23-24, we saw significant growth also. Our gross earnings was projected to reach 4.38 billion, making a notable 9.6% increase over the previous fiscal year. And 2024, we're looking even better for 2024-25. We recorded an impressive 1.2%. 7 million visitors within the first four and a half months of the year. So far, we've recorded 1.1 million stopover arrivals, and I'm adjusting a little bit here because the cruise, as now the figures came in this morning, cruise is 723,000 for the year so far, and that means, in fact, that we are closing at 1.8. Million, but we're looking beyond to the end of May when Jamaica will experience for the first time in our history two million visitors stop over and cruise in the first five months of the year. And in the process, we would also be um, annexing the two billion US dollars mark. And, and all of this puts us in good position for what our projections are for um, 2025. You recall some of you who have been to these press briefings, you keep hearing me talk about our KPIs for 5 by 5 by 5. That is, yes, to achieve 5 million visitors in 5 years and earn $5 billion for Jamaica. Well, notwithstanding COVID, that five-year period still holds. So 2020 to 2025, and right now we are on track to achieve five million visitors in 2025, five billion earnings within that five-year period, notwithstanding nearly two years of COVID. And very few destinations across the world can have that post. I want to make a point here also about the U.S. market because whilst we recognize that there are headwinds and um, you know travel advisors sometimes uh, intervene and we treat with them as they come because it is what it is. We have to manage and make sure that each one improves on the other. Jamaica for the year so far January to the middle of May, we are 4.5% up in the U.S. market, increasing from 699,605 last year to 730,877. We're making the point here that the American market is still very, very comfortable with destination. Um, we're pleased for that. The Director of Tourism, Donovan White, will give you a deeper dive in some of these numbers that I've indicated. But I want to update you on two other critical aspects of our performance, and that is in terms of our human capital development. Because for us, people are the essence of tourism, and our workers are at the heart of our future growth and development and with services. And we are committed to working together with our, our private sector partners to create a new labor market environment for the workers of our industry. One element is their social security. And we established the first ever tourism workers pension scheme. No other country in the world has a comprehensive pension plan 
for every category of worker in the tourism industry. And that plan and scheme is now two years old in execution. And within that period, the government of Jamaica gave one billion Jamaican dollars to see the fund. And we have now registered 10,000 workers in the plan and the total savings is now in excess of two billion dollars so when adding to the Jamaica government's one billion the fund now has three billion dollars in two years and this will change the whole uh, arrangement for 